The inspector general, an independent watchdog with the Department of Homeland Security, says that the Secret Service not only deleted many text messages around the time of January 6, but that they did it after his office requested them. The inspector general telling lawmakers that there have been delays and confusion and how these records have been turned over. But this morning, the Secret Service is pushing back in a statement to ABC News stating the insinuation that the Secret Service maliciously deleted text messages following a request is false. In fact, the Secret Service has been fully cooperating. The department says well before that request was made, it was in the process of updating its mobile phones and resetting them. And because of that, some of the data was lost. They insist that it's nothing the inspector general was looking for. But now with two different sides to this story, lawmakers are trying to figure out a way to get to the bottom of this. Leaders on both sides this morning calling for transparency. I'll go with the inspector general. <laughs> That's where I'll go. I mean, this, this, is, this is crap. Okay, you understand. This is Trump's infestation of the Secret Service. This Tony Ornato guy. Um, first of all, whatever happened to Keith Schiller, you know, Donald Trump's bodyguard, who, you know, would intimidate. So I think that when Schiller left, when Keith Schiller left, he uh, recommended Tony Ornato at the Secret Service. And uh, Donald Trump gave him a cabinet position, gave him an office in the in the West Wing. OK, and uh, so this is what the testimony from Cassidy Hutchinson showed us that Tony Ornato and the guy who was, uh, you know, uh, protecting Donald Trump that day, that Donald Trump apparently, you know, uh, reached across the seat from the SUV. It was an SUV they were in, okay? It wasn't the Beast. It wasn't a limousine where he's way, way in the back. No, this was an SUV, and Donald Trump was told he could not go to the Capitol, which is the important part of the story that Donald Trump secretly had always planned on going to the Capitol and that the Secret Service felt that it would not be a safe thing for him to do and did not want to take him to the Capitol. And he lost his mind and he became violent and he apparently reached over the car seat and tried to grab the steering wheel. And when that didn't work, he grabbed the clavicle of uh, the Secret Service agent. That's the story that the Secret Service agent, two of them, Tony Arnato and the other one, Engel, Robert Engel, told Cassidy Hutchinson in Tony Arnato's office after they came back from the Save America rally. Save America rally, oh my God. Anyway, th that, 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 he, this is what Cassidy Hutchinson testified to. When you returned to the White House in the motorcade after the president's speech, where did you go? When I returned to the White House, I walked upstairs towards the chief of staff's office, and I noticed Mr. Renato lingering outside of the office. And once we had made eye contact, he quickly waved me to go into his office, which was just across the hall from mine. When I went in, he shut the door, and I noticed Bobby Angle, who is the head of Mr. Trump's security detail, sitting in a chair, just looking somewhat discombobulated and a little lost. Um, and I, I looked at Tony, and he had said, did you effing hear what happened in the Beast? I said, no, Tony, I, I just got back. What happened? Tony proceeded to tell me that when the president got in the beast, he was under the impression from Mr. Meadows that the off the record movement to the Capitol was still possible and likely to happen, but that Bobby had more information. So once the president had gotten into the vehicle with Bobby, he thought that they were going up to the Capitol. And when Bobby had relayed to him, we're not, we don't have the assets to do it. It's not secure. We're going back to the West Wing. The president had very strong, a very angry response to that. Um, Tony described him as being irate. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. To which Bobby responded, sir, we have to go back to the West Wing. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Engel. And Mr. when Mr. Renato had recounted this story to me, he had motioned towards his clavicles. 
So that's how she testified under oath. And it has since been corroborated by the Secret Service. That happened, what, a week ago? Two Secret Service sources have just confirmed to CNN that Donald Trump did angrily demand to be taken to the U.S. Capitol as rioters, may I say armed rioters, mm. approached Capitol Hill and he berated his protective detail when he did not get his way. So this is significant because it corroborates some of the testimony from Cassidy Hutchinson on Tuesday. Right. And then yesterday, uh, some of the D.C. Metro Police corroborated even further that they uh, had seen what happened with the motorcade. So do we know who this witness is and what exactly they're saying that allegedly backs up Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony? We don't have a lot of specifics right now, Anderson, but our reporters, Jamie Gangel and Annie Grayer, were able to learn that there was a Metropolitan Police Department a police officer. This was someone working for the Washington, D.C. police force that was part of the motorcade that did speak to the January 6th Select Committee and was able to corroborate uh, at least a little bit about Donald Trump's position uh, and his attitude on that day of January 6th, and specifically that he was angry uh, and had the desire to go to the Capitol on that day. Now, this wouldn't have been an officer that would have been specifically in the presidential SUV that was, uh, which is in dispute right now, but someone that was part of that group of vehicles that would have taken the president from the ellipse back to the White House.